Fast chargers are rolling out. Worldwide, of course, but also nationwide and at a better pace than you might realize, and a fresh round of government money to help happen, make it happen is underway. I'm joined today by uh, my good friend Herbert from Brighter with Herbert, who is going to make us a little bit brighter, uh, I hope, because otherwise, I mean, what are we doing here? I'm Brian. Welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> So Herbert, we got this new story out. This was out uh, a couple of days ago now, just two, maybe two days ago when this rolls out. Uh, Feds award five hundred and twenty-one million in EV charger funds, but rollout remains slow. It's part of a seven and a half billion dollar program for EV charger infrastructure. What have you heard about this? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you and I discussed this already. This is something that I believe that the government, the United States, bipartisan, needs to support. They need to be investing in electric vehicle charger infrastructure in the United States. This is a national security concern. You got China and other countries, specifically China, going full force, going all electric. This isn't just about electric versus gas, though. This is about smart cars. And this is the lead into that. And you need to have these infrastructure. The number one reason why people are not buying electric vehicles is cost. And the second one is range anxiety. So we need to have these EV structures out there. So, you know, there's a lot of complaints on the partisan side saying that the Biden administration has been wasting the money. That may or may not be true. Um, I know I think you have a slightly different opinion on that, but they certainly do feel like, it does feel like that they've announced these programs. It sounds like it's a good thing, but then you don't know how effective they are rolling them out. Um, I just think that you know, they should be treating Tesla a lot better than they have been. Tesla is the most likely to be able to implement very effective superchargers. It's already it's consistently voted and uh, the number one experience and also the just the most unlikely to be, you know, off grid or something wrong with it. So I do hope that they continue to invest, but I do hope that uh, they can show more progress and they can show that it's actually effective and actually working, not just, you know, some sort of statement that we're going to do this, but then don't, you know, drop the ball. So there was a time when one of the very large YouTubers was sponsored by Electrify America mm -hmm. and uh, they asked him to please stop mentioning us in videos. And he said, well, I have to be honest. And they said, okay, well, we're just going to cash you out of the rest of your contract. Mm. And we're not your sponsor anymore because he had to be honest. Even when they were giving him money, he had to be honest. I see. So where is this Where is this money going, you may ask? Well, I just pulled up Google News here and found California, mm -hmm. Detroit. Let's see. I mean, it's everywhere. Pittsburgh, and, and so when, they, when these states get them, who are they being given to? Is it like I think you said before that is still Tesla getting the majority of this or is it being like given to, you know, bids or how? Do so you go out for bid and... There's a minimum uh, percentage of the project that you have to pay for. I don't remember if it's 20% or 30%, but you can pay for as much of it. You could pay 90% if you wanted, um, and there's a limit on how much they will spend. Uh, Tesla is not the majority, but they are the largest recipient of these grants by a substantial margin because they bid on just about every right. single one of them. Yep. And for the most part, they, again, they get the most bids, but they need to spread it around. They don't want to give all of the money to one company, uh, which is unfortunate because when you were saying that Tesla is yeah. constantly rated the best charging, yep. it's not even close. They're not, not even, close. even in the, yep. no one else is in the same ballpark. And it just makes me wonder where we would be without Tesla. Yeah. And yeah, so Milwaukee, Pittsburgh, all kinds of, of uh, states are getting these. Um, and you and I have talked to this about this also, but I'd like to bring it up to this audience, right? It's like, why is the expectation that Tesla be the one to spend the money to build out the superchargers? They did it at the beginning 10 years ago because there was no superchargers out there at all. They spent the money to build the infrastructure. They were able to, you know, basically convince every single automaker to make the NACS the standard. Tesla standard is now the standard. Why is the expectation that Tesla needs to build this? The government needs to step in. Um, every automaker needs to build their version of it, no matter what standard that they decide to, to work on. And in fact, I think that every company like Starbucks and Target, they should spend money and they should build it out because it's going to be in their locations and they're going to benefit from this. 
but it doesn't, you know, like this notion that Tesla needs to spend the money. Why isn't Tesla building more? But they are. They are spending money. They are doing this, but this should be something that's national security concern. Everybody should be building. I agree. When worth noting, when the supercharger team was let go, and again, most of them were brought back, yeah. uh, this wasn't the people on the ground. The people doing the actual construction and maintenance, they were not impacted by these cuts. So nothing actually changed on the ground. There was a, a weak gap in having permits looked at for, at the corporate level. And that's it. I've heard people say, oh, well, of course, uh, you know, Ford and Rivian and all those are going are slow rolling their adoption of NACS because they don't believe the future certain. Come on, that's an excuse. And I think this makes sense for Tesla to keep doing. I don't, as we discussed on your show, I don't feel like they're obligated to do it. Uh, but as a shareholder, I want them to because I think there's good money in it. Because even if they're only charging a, you know, I see a lot of chargers at 35 to 38 cents in places where uh, industrial commercial power is like seven to 10 cents. And I see, so I'm thinking there's a 20, 30 cent per kilowatt hour markup. That's going to be a profit center. And for vehicles coming in from outside the network, they pay either a higher, a slightly higher rate yep. or have a monthly membership. That's all going to matter. Even if it was, even if it's just a, uh, a not a money maker in that regard, the memberships alone can cover it. If you look at Amazon's annual profit, it is almost exactly the amount of prime memberships. If you look at Costco's annual profit, it is it's, almost it's exactly huge. the amount of their yeah. memberships. And if and they, so that's where that comes from. Yeah, and if they they finish off this, you know, this ability to have solar uh, patio, so solar, what do they call that? Canopies. Canopies, yeah, solar canopies with the Megapack chargers, it's free. <laughs> it becomes free. free it energy. becomes closer to free. It yeah. becomes closer to free, and it's locally sourced organic. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and... We have seen a doubling in public chargers over the last three and a half years. That's a heck of a deal. And we haven't seen a doubling in the number of vehicles on the road. So this is quite good. This is a figure I am I am happy with. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you, uh, one frustration I am definitely having is the misleading uh, misleading on the cost of EV chargers. This is something I had, I had hoped that the conversation that Elon and Donald Trump had would be more uh, focused on EVs and there really wasn't. And he's still out saying that it's going to be that they built eight chargers for $9 billion. And the problem is when someone high profile says that a lot of people who uh, love and trust them, repeat them uncritically. And it is not seven, it is not 9 billion. There is no 9 billion figure, not anywhere. The whole program's seven and a half billion and very little of it has actually been allocated let alone spent for eight chargers. It's very frustrating. He's saying the grid can't handle it. And I just, it just drives me crazy because we look at this. This is, I don't think I can zoom in much more. I guess I can mm -hmm. yeah, a little bit. Um, this is just Tesla chargers that have come online recently. 827, a- All China. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, China, China. But you get down a little bit, Thailand, Finland, mm -hmm. China, Hong Kong. Hmm. Uh, there we go. <laughs> the bathroom, California. That mm -hmm. place sounds lovely. But uh, yeah, I guess there is a lot coming on in China. But this only gets us back to July 24th. This is a lot of capacity coming online. And you'll notice they're all, almost all 250 watt installations, version twos, threes, threes. Um, and yeah, so there's a lot of you know, they, they just keep going up. And this is, I think, you know, exciting. What do you see happening next? Like I said, they need to grow this. Uh, uh, superchargers need to go everywhere. And I, what I see happening next is I do think that uh, chains are going to step up. At this point, like I've already started to hear, like two years ago, three years ago, I would hear people saying, hey, complaining that my apartment building doesn't support this now it's it's i'm more and more again this is anecdotal i don't know what the actual number is but if it's true that what you just said that there's double what about the destination chargers not the ones that are supercharged but actually locations i think you're going to start seeing starbucks 
announcing that they're going to do this. There has already been um, precedent about this. You know, we've been we've done many stories about how different f companies have announced that they will have chargers in their premises, their parking lots. But they have to at this point. It's like no, it's almost like a necessary at this point because there's now five, ten. There's now ten percent of cars, right? All new cars being sold in the U.S. is um, electric. So it's already at that tipping point. They need to do this. And I would say I've seen people say, well, yes, but there's this many gas stations. Therefore, we need at least that many electric chargers in public. And it ignores the fact that. Most people charge at home most of the time. Yeah. And there are people for whom that's not possible. If you count all of those destination chargers today, we're actually equal to the number of gas stations already out there. If if you don't, then there's, I think they're saying that by 2030, there should be uh, the same number. The The thing to remember, though, is that the problem is the opposite is going to happen, too. A uh, number of gas stations are going to go out of business. And as EV charges go up, it's just an automatic, like, you know, they will exponentially die as well. So we'll we'll be there soon enough. But anyways, if you know, just think about that number, 2030, we'll have the same number of gas stations are already, that's plenty, that's fine. Six years from now, it's that's plenty. plenty. So there, by the way, as you say, there is no range anxiety. I just will tell any person I meet, uh, you and I have many friends who have driven all around the United States mega thousands and thousands of miles on the road trips i've had a friend one of our friends has a regular standard range tesla model 3 not even the long range a standard range an old model 3 and she was able to drive all the way down from seattle all the way down to texas back up again no issues at all no issues at all so there's it's already enough and it's yeah it's crazy to think about it i will reiterate i've said it a million times but i think Level one should be in every airport garage mm -hmm. yep. so that it can trickle charge while you're out of town for a week. I think level two should be at every Sonic drive-in because mm -hmm. you're parked there anyway in a stall. Mm -hmm. uh, or no, level uh, three in those and level twos at every movie theater. Yeah. Because you're going to be there for a few hours. I don't want a level three. That's much too fast. I'm not going to leave during the credits to unplug. So guys, what did we miss? What did we misunderstand? Please do me a favor and leave it in the comments below. And uh, I should mention, uh, I haven't mentioned this in a few days at least, that I'm going to be in Florida wow. uh, for uh, Florida Cyberfest, September 21st uh, from 3 to 9 p.m. It's probably going to end up starting a bit earlier than that. And who knows when it'll end. Maybe it will never end. <laughs> Maybe this is our life It says now. 3 p.m. to 9 p.m., dude. <laughs> You'll um, <laughs> We'll see. Okay. I mean, you won't find out unless you go. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. And uh, everybody else, like, subscribe, do the usual. Head on over to uh, Brighter with Herbert. See what he's up to. He's got some great content over there uh, all the time with a long list of amazing guests. And uh, thank you for being here with me, Herbert. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, Brian. And Thanks, everybody. And uh, everybody else, yeah. Stay tuned. Stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you. Clever robots on the flippity flop. <laughs>